Uh, what is uh, a Mickey Mouse degree then? Well, it's a very good question. And like you, I've been in this field for 23 years and we've talked about this a lot. And it changes over time. Like I remember when people used to say computer, you know, like computer games. Yes. How could that possibly be a degree level subject? People sort of stopped making that argument around about the time that the computer games industry became a massive industry. For I was about to say, when they realised it was one a multi-billion pound global industry and we were one of yeah. the greatest in the world at doing it. Maybe that's when they and stopped. And that's the thing. I mean, I, I basically think, I mean, look, it's not like every single student in every single course gets what they need out of it. It's a huge system, right? So there will somewhere be, you know, the odd thing that isn't working. And we've got to have a system that kind of checks that out and yeah. makes sure it doesn't happen. I, I would argue we do, but, you know, we'll come back to that. But the other thing is, you know, students need good information to make a decision and then it should be up to them, right? And students have an odd habit of making decisions that, you know, their parents might not think are that sensible, but work out to be good for them. And so sure. I kind of think trust people to make their own names up, minds up. What what seems to be, I, mean, I do remember, Vivian, there was a, and I never know, never found out whether this was true or not, that you could do a degree in David Beckham. Um, now, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was probably a sports science degree and there was a component of that degree where you could study a well-known athlete and maybe somebody picked David Beckham. It yeah. didn't stop, you know, some newspapers going, he's doing a degree in David Beckham, it's a waste of yeah. money. But uh, th there probably are degrees where, and I, I can't provide evidence for this, where if you were to track what the degree did in terms of the, the, the person's subsequent journey into yeah. the workplace, did they ever pay did they ever earn enough money ever to pay off that 50,000 because if you don't hit the threshold you don't pay it of course that's when I suppose it does become a government problem right when you realize that actually the taxpayer is subsidizing x amount x amount of percentage of degrees that never go anywhere is that's a reasonable right. debate right yeah so right and we've got in England and the system's a bit different in other parts of the UK but in England we've got a regulator um, which monitors the performance of uh, universities on those sorts of measures. So they look at things like how many students continue from one year to the next, what proportion complete, and how many students go on and get a good outcome. Now, it, the, the Conservative Party today has said that they think about one in eight courses are somehow falling short. The regulator, the OFS, says that when you look at that good outcomes measure, it's about 1%. Now, that's quite a big difference. So one in eight is 13 percent. Mm. OFS says one percent. So I'd like to know kind of where did the 13 percent come from? Yeah, that's a but fair the point. Thing say, the uh, other thing I'd say is that, you know, for not not everybody is motivated by earnings. Now, it's, it's actually very important to a lot of uh, students and graduates. But mm. there are some people who will decide to do so and do, do something knowing full well they're never going to be uh, tremendously well paid. Like, you know, quite a lot of people who go into public service and caring professions. Yeah. Uh, people who go into creative industries and those are kind of legitimate choices if you know what you're getting into and i suppose that's the crucial thing do you have the information to make the right choice in terms of where mr sunak in this case i mean others have made the same argument thinks that the, the, the money saved would go that would be into apprenticeships i appreciate you talk about universities and not about apprenticeships but i'm sure nonetheless that you, there is a persuasive argument isn't there to encourage kids to go that route if they don't feel that they're up to the university one yeah and it's not i mean i'm i'm a fan of apprenticeships in fact quite a lot of apprenticeships happen at degree level and there's demand for them. Mm. The issue is actually supply. So the issue is that getting companies to offer apprenticeships is, is not straightforward. And that's why the numbers have been going down. Yeah. But it shouldn't be an either or, right? We've got people get obsessed by the 50% um, participation rate, not thinking that means 50% of the population are not going to university. And I think there needs to be a plurality of routes. So people have got lots of options to choose from. An apprenticeship should be part of that mix. But I just do resent rather the kind of trading it off against, uh, you know, uh, universities, because I, I generally think universities are offering really good opportunities to students. And that's borne out by the data. There it is. Vivian, thank you for your time. Vivian.